Um, well, if there's no other questions, I think that brings us right to uh, Ray Willard and Brad White for their closing statements for the first ever online Washington and Weed Invasive Species Conference, which is pretty exciting. So take it away, Ray. Hey, everybody. I've got a couple slides here. And I'm going to get those going. Can you see it? We Are see you teams. seeing the earth? We see teams. You're seeing teams. OK, hold on. Show screen. Thanks to everyone who got to be a part of this, uh, either as a panelist or a, or a attendee. I think this was a pretty memorable event. Um, it's going to go down in history for sure. It's the 70th annual uh, virtual weed conference. So well, it's not actually the 70th annual virtual weed conference, but it's the year we did it as a virtual conference, obviously. Anyway. Um, so Brad and I are going to kind of give some thoughts about just what this all means and what we're talking about here and, and, and what we should be doing with it moving forward. Um, but I, I would really like to just acknowledge um, as a group, and like this is kind of what I've said at the start, uh, that kind of we are the ones that are going to, if, if we, if the, the landscape of our state is going to be preserved in the future and managed in a way that's sustainable, it's up to us. And so it's, it's up to us in the work we do, but it's also up to us in being able to go out and tell our friends and neighbors and family about this work and how important it is and, and what it is we're all doing. So I guess that's kind of what I'd like to leave everybody with as a sort of a call to action as we as we go out from here is think about all of the the great talks we had here that ranged from the sort of get it done side of the equation to the study the issue and figure out what's going on here side of the equation. And really what we're all about as a group is trying to bring that all together. And so really this slide that I used here is part of my uh, presentation on asset management for, for roadside or landscape, but it's also um, very applicable to what we're all talking about. This is really what brings us all together is, is the landscape. And really the fact that in the short time that we've been here, really relatively short, there's Lewis and Clark, you know, when they came out, Undaunted Courage, that's another book I would recommend if if, uh, if you haven't read that one, it's, it's a, the biography of, of Lewis and Clark's um, expedition. But basically, you know, that's 150 years or so. And really, if you look at the footprint we've had on the landscape of the state in that short period of time, it's kind of amazing. And if we keep going at the rate we're going, um, it's going to be a problem at some point. So really what we're all talking about here and all the issues we're talking about is how do we save this place, um, this beautiful state of ours for the future? And I think in, in what we've been able to do at DOT um, is a good example for everybody. And I'd like to encourage you all to kind of take this approach in managing your whatever it is you're dealing with in the landscape or in the pest management industry and really try to use the principles of solid asset management meaning you need to really understand the situation that you're you're working in and all of the aspects of that you know all of the science behind it all of the history all of the the social context and then really sit down and figure out what the best decisions are. And really the only way to do that with landscape and with uh, when you're talking about, you know, a, a landscape or a, a community of plants and, and critters and that, that's gonna grow over time, you know, you're, you're really looking at, um, it's, it's a very difficult challenge to manage that. So really what I'd encourage us all to do is really apply what we've heard here today and the templates of instant command um, you know, in response to uh, the new invader, 
Um, that's that's the stuff we're talking about here. We really, as a group, if we work together, we can can use this stuff and learn from each other and do a lot better job and 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 engage the rest of the state in in this problem, this issue, opportunity, shall we say? So um, the first time I met Brad White. So Brad is the uh, assist, one of the assistant directors over at Department of Ag, and he's uh, Brad. You can turn your camera on if you want. Brad is a uh, a long time associate of mine. We met back in uh, Tukwila in around the turn of the century when the uh, citrus longhorn beetles came in with the bonsai plants. And that, that bonsai nursery just happened to be right next to the freeway. <laughs> and so um, we got to work together back then. And that's 20 years ago, Brad. It's kind of amazing. But look at how much we've accomplished just in the last 20 years. It's kind of amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Give us 20 more. We'll get some something else done too. So. Yeah, so I guess that was my introduction to Ray was like, I'm here to cut your trees down. Um, nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> so, but you know, uh, eradication, complete eradication of an Asian longhorn beetle, um, wood boring species are hard to deal with. So um, that project was so successful that people actually forget it happened. So I've been to conferences, Dr. Mare has been to conferences where people have said, we've never been able to eradicate a longhorn wood borer from the US. And we like to say, we take offense to that. So anyways, it was a good project, uh, learned a lot, it was a lot of fun. Um, and so that kind of brings me to a couple of things I wanted to touch on, Ray, is um, you know, to continue to be successful in the invasive species world, um, you know, we're gonna have to continue to collaborate and innovate. And I think those are the things that are gonna save us. And thinking back on the, the 20 years, I, Collaboration and innovation has always been part of, of what our various agencies do, but I think we're getting better at it. Um, it was kind of hard in the past. Uh, there were some barriers to it, but a lot of those barriers are, have broken down or, or are eroding. And uh, like collaboration is important for, for us, given that you know everybody has limited and in many cases diminishing resources. So being able to leverage other people's you know help and, and resources is is excellent um and also the you know as we've noticed invasives don't don't care about boundaries so um i think it's a uh, probably better for us all if we get used to collaborating instead of being forced to work together so it's two different sides of the same coin maybe but um it's a lot easier if you can if you can work with each other to get these these things done and the collaboration doesn't have to it can go from very complicated in my experience um for example, the Spartina cooperative days where, um, you know, the the eradication team for Spartina identifies a geographical area that's, you know, troublesome for the eradication efforts as a whole, and then pull together all the involved agencies to basically descend on that spot for a few days and and do the work that needs to be done. And that's a that's a you know large involvement of assets, resources, personnel that all has to be coordinated and and um, and juggled. So it can go from that to um, something down to just you know, resource sharing. Um, WSDA actually kind of has a small Navy at this point. And um, that's uh, watercraft is a serious limitation for some of the work for counties getting stuff done. And, you know, we have a jet boat that's basically out on permanent loan. Um, you know, that's uh, a little bit of logistics on our part, but it helps other people get work done that they could not do otherwise. And that's a, it's a huge investment for us for a small amount of uh, effort and resources. And they can go all the way down to something very basic. Uh, for example, in Gypsy Moth, we have uh, um, the DNR, if we're using an aerial uh, application, they loan us out some of their King radios, um, even have provided training on how to use them so that our uh, people can cover the spray blocks and talk directly to the aircraft, which is, you know, that kind of communications is a significant investment and having someone who can just say, hey, we're not using these right now because nothing's on fire. Um, you know, go ahead and borrow them and bag some training. Um, I know Sven said he was tired to talk about murder hornet, but um, I'm not. So um, that was another. Uh, great example of collaboration that made the project up to this point successful. Um, we have uh, universities involved, we have extension involved, we have international and domestic researchers involved, several 
uh, federal entities as well as state and local folks, and, and not to mention the public getting pulled into it. So that's something that worked out very well in this project. Um, I've been skeptical of you know the citizen scientists approach in the past, but this made it really work. And I think that's something that we should probably think about leveraging in the future. Um, so, and again, back to the innovation and Sven brought up another great point is that sometimes it's hard to take innovation from other people, but we've gotten a lot better at that. It's like, you know, they already built the mousetrap, let's use it. So I think that that's something that's hard for people to get over. And once you get there, it can make your life a lot easier. So uh, another observation about innovation on my part is that it, it almost always comes from the field of operations. It doesn't come from the front office. So um, the best ideas I've seen are just the, the folks that are working directly with the problem on the ground trying to fix it. And then they bring that stuff back to the, back to the office and, and get it sorted out. So I think that these kinds of um, conferences are great in maintaining and developing those contacts that people need to be able to, to find those those innovations and opportunities to collaborate. And then um, the other thing that's uh, become very important for us, and you guys have already heard about this, is the whole outreach aspect of what we're doing. Um, WSDA was very slow in adopting social media because A, we didn't know how to work it, and you know, it's 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 squirrely. You can't control it. It it's it's got a life of its own. But you know, we got some very capable, smart people um to run that for us and it's it's paid massive dividends for us so um i think it's taken a while maybe for especially our federal partners to recognize that the outreach is important um that's one of the things they question we put in work plans asking for funding is like you know what what do you need an outreach person for and it, it's getting more so that the outreach is what's allowing us to do the work and be successful as opposed to whatever regulatory authority we have um, and then lastly, I just wanted to mention that there's uh, there's folks in the audience that are either currently in management or supervisors where they're moving into that track. Um, a lot of people on this call, this conference will be moving into higher levels of decision making. And um, I think it's our part of our job being in those positions is to create uh, a space where our people can be successful. And what I mean by that is that when you're asking people to collaborate and innovate, you have to recognize that there, there's an element of calculated risk and people need to have permission to occasionally have something not work. Um, and as, uh, as management needs to be OK with letting that happen occasionally. So I know people don't like to point at something and say, well, you know, we wasted X number of dollars on that. and It didn't work. but Something came out of that effort that, you know, will inform the next step. And it wasn't wasted because it demonstrated something, you know, that's not the answer. We need to move on and find something else. So well, folks that are currently in management supervisory positions or going to be someday, I would I would encourage you to keep that in mind is you know, um, encourage risk, accept failure on occasion and, um, you know, allow your people to succeed. And that's all I've got, Ray. Thank you. Right. And, and it'll be old, right? This the stuff that we're working on, talk about innovation. It's nonstop. We're gonna continue to grow and innovate. We'll learn, we'll learn together as a group as we go. And you'll have opportunities to meet with us again in contexts like this, hopefully next time in person. Uh, I think the the value of meeting in person and being able to sit down and talk, you know, one on one and or in a group is just invaluable. And that's that'll come back. It's just it's hard to see it. We're so stuck in this time we're in right now, and it's been such a long time. It seems like that. Um, I don't know. To me, it seems like it might never end. But we're coming up on the end here at some point, right, Brad? I would hope so. Get back so. to normal. Get back to normal. <laughs> Whatever the new normal is. Yes. So with that, thank you, everybody. Thanks to all our presenters. Uh, really pleased with how this came out. Um, I think we've got something here that we can build on for sure. And uh, there will be evaluation popping up at the very end here. So be sure and fill that out again. And uh, there'll be a chance to respond again by an email. Um, so you'll get an email if you've signed up as an attendee. And so we do want your feedback. We wanna really try and um, build on the future here and make sure we can address the needs of the community that we're serving. So 
thank you all for your work and uh, we'll see you either in the field or virtually or on email and uh, go do good work. Thanks everybody. Thank you.